Hey everyone, welcome to my latest Kickstarter project from Wargame Forge. I am the the head designer, creator, but I'm the only person currently at this time behind Wargame Forge, and I'm here to kind of show off um, my latest Kickstarter here. And this one's just a little bit different. The other ones all, my previous Kickstarters all had a central theme out of everything for the entire set that I was giving that, that I was. Uh, promoting this one is more as I'm, I'm kind of calling it the spring cleaning as i went through um my library of design seeing what i have not released and i'm looking to offer what i think is kind of ready to go and here is kind of a catch-all now they're all going to be six millimeter scale terrain uh and hex map scale terrain uh, specifically for battle tech um i mean the um Six millimeter scale train could be used for anything like I, uh, for like for Adeptus Titanic, Adeptus Titanicus, uh, or Imperialis, Aeronautical, whatever. I'm sorry, I can't remember that one offhand. Or Epic, the old school Epic 40k. Um, but uh, but with this, another reason why I'm doing this is kind of motivating myself. I am currently recovering from an injury and I'm stuck home as I'm recovering from this injury. So I'm looking for this to help me occupy my mind and give me something to work on as I am going through all this. So uh, what I've done is kind of pulled up designs that a couple of these designs I've offered for sale, but as only as physical prints, but this will be the first time the STL files will be offered. Now, now again, um, if this wasn't clear at first, this is only for the STL files. So I will not, there is no physical prints of any of the items here as part of this Kickstarter. You do need to have your own 3d printer to be able to print any of these items so i thought we'd just go right into this um like i said a lot of this stuff is at least for the, the intro set and the first couple um stretch goals are set some of the later stretch goals there's some stuff i need to work on like one of the things that the initial basic set here is what i initially designed as the wargame forge exclusive i was only selling as prints through my ebay store because my my prints of physical stuff were I kind of nosedive, but I can also understand a lot of people are getting into 3D printing, so people are buying the prints, and as my physical sales have gone down, my sales of my STL files through my mini factory store have definitely vastly improved. So, And ultimately, my goal is just to switch to a design house instead of actually fulfilling um, physical sales, as I have uh, got many, many great print houses out there with commercial license for my stuff. Um, so enough of that. Anyways, like I said, the first batch is the Wargame Forge exclusive stuff that I'm now going to be releasing. Then there are two, the other two stuff that's, one is done and the other one is partially done. There are two different items for Kickstarters that I was working on. One just kind of fell away due to design issues, but I've kind of overcome that. And so that's why I'm pulling them out of Mothball. And the other one is just one that I've been working on. And again, I just need the motivation to keep going. So let me dive right in here and show you what I got. So let's go here. Oh, I jumped ahead a little. This one. This is the first building. Uh, I call this one the Corporate Tower. Now, as you can see, there, you, this here is the initial basic design. Oh, you're going to end up, sometimes you'll see some assets in the background. Those aren't going to be. I usually just throw assets for certain designs off on the side as I'm working on things. I just may not have cleaned everything up. So this is the general design right here. So this one, the size, the default size for this is 88 millimeters by 88 millimeters by 132.1 millimeters. Now, I do tend to offer multiple versions of this. Like this is one without the hex base. I got two with hex base at a six millimeter scale. If that, if you like playing BattleTech with a true scale buildings, and the reason why I have two is one is your generic general hex base and my hex base for the general hex base are five millimeters thick um the second one here is what i call the mag hex base and this is something i designed it was actually based off one of my first uh kickstarters as you can see the base has these holes in each corner i designed these to have six millimeter uh, not, i'm sorry not six three millimeter ball magnets inserted here and they pop in, no glue, and using ball magnets, you don't have to worry about polarity. And so if you want to actually have a full hex map built, and actually I do have 
over on my, my, my mini factory store, it was, was offered in my first Kickstarter, terrain, trees, forest, rough terrain, all sorts of that, and all of my buildings, everything I design has the option to go with the MagHack space here. So you can actually build and print up and build an entire game map, and they all connect together using the ball magnets. And I did build a frame that you can put around the edge of the board to hold it all, to actually help hold it all together. Because while the ball, ball magnets help them stay together, uh, they're not going to keep it together if things get jostled. So I offer that in both here. So you can just print it up without the ball magnet holes or with it. And then these are if you want to do hex map scale. And again, I have no ball magnets and then the hex map scale, the, um, the mag hex base. And then I also offer these with the construction factor and level heights with, with that and without it. Because I've had some people like that information on there, others don't like that. So I, here you go. I'm giving you the options. Print what you like for the how you want to play. So for the most part, the I, when I design an item, there's seven versions. So, and the hex the the hex map skill stuff is usually about 35 percent of the size of this. So scaled down, and they've been working out really well. And anyone, if you're not familiar with the mag hex, um, they have been working perfect for me. Um, and I have been selling them for about close to two years now, and I have not heard any complaints on the functionality or any complaints with the set and they've and the basic terrain set and the mag hex stuff have been selling quite well for um on my, my mini factory store i'm gonna keep saying that um so yeah so that's the first one i'm not gonna go through all that with everybody so that that's the basic primer on why there's seven different versions so basic the hex normal hex map mag hex again then the map hex scale with and without the ball magnets, with and without the, the construction faction, vector and level. So next we have, I call this one the high-rise condos. Um, actually, hold on. Let me go back to this one real quick. So I do, let me switch over here. Please excuse my uh, messy desk. So this is the corporate tower with the normal hex base. Um, this has been printed up with an FDM printer, uh, I believe at about um, 0.18 or 0.2 layer height. Uh, actually, let me turn the light on a little better. So that's what this looks like printed out. Oh, and I will say though, um, the six millimeter scale stuff, I do for the most part print with an FDM printer in mind. But since the hex map scale stuff is this shrunk down to 35% this size, I strongly suggest using a um, resin printer for any of the hex map scale stuff because of the um, smaller scale. But I mean, if you are a really good 3D printer out there and you've dialed your uh, uh, FDM filament printer into printing that, go for it. I just uh, just on my own, I've found I've had much better success with a fil uh, with a resin printer for the hex map scale stuff. So here you go. This is what that looks like. Oh, and all my hexes are based off of the FASA or Catalyst Game Labs uh, hex, uh, the battle map hex size. So these are the perfect fit for those maps. I should have had a map out here to prove that. I don't, but here is a Warhammer miniature, putting it right there. So you can kind of see the, the, the base of the miniature is always a little smaller than the hex. And you can get a feel for the scale of the true, um, true scale or six millimeter scale or how whatever you wish to call the scale compared to a 40k miniature and I typically design each level about 10 millimeters in height and then two levels with two levels about 20 millimeters in height would constitute one level in height for battle tech rules if you want to go that route so there's that now let's go back to my screen capture go to the next one this is the high-rise condo zoom in it's a pretty basic um also I, I try to design all my stuff that so it kind of looks again please ignore the uh assets in the background um kind of a simple design but there's also some functionality here and i don't know if any of you notices as i said so two levels two two floors equal one level in battletech rules so we got one two three four five so basically i made a step 
step <laughs> so um, a building that can be act as uh, steps for a mech to get up on a highest point and let's say your mech had jump jets and it can only get so high well the next turn they get even higher and go up and again you get the seven different variations on this and so let's go over to the down here let me get this ah, here we go so this is the condo the high rise condo i just showed you and it is designed i know warhammers don't normally have jump jets but as you can see bam bam it's designed so a mech miniature uh, well, they're they're uh don't go knocking the table but there you go so and again this was the, with an fdm printer just like the other one let's go back to the screen third building I had an idea of more of a flatter, squatter, kind of a shopping, a, a strip mall, sci but with a sci-fi flair to it. So that's what I got here. Um, kind of like the, the weird sci-fi windows. Nothing, Nothing's ever in a 90 degree corner in some sci-fi. So you got the back alley uh, stores and you got the front here. Parking lot, uh, open air walkway and everything. So that's that. And again, yes, you will have the seven different versions. And top down. And then this is what the print looks like compared to the miniature. So, and yeah, made it so there's these signs. Yeah, actually, probably. You see, there's like areas where if you actually want to get down there and paint on store names, I gave you a little uh, placard for that. All the different windows. And yeah, I mean, it's great miniatures. Go right on there. It's a level, level one, level two, and just to have some fun there. But yeah, no, I will admit, I part of me is not hundred percent set on this, but I have learned that sometimes stuff that I don't think clicks with me, there's an audience out there. I mean, there there's some of the stuff that I was like, oh, I don't think this one's going to work, and it turns out to be one of my top sellers. So I keep with it because I never know what you guys are going to be up for. So. This is something I wanted to give a try. It's more of a, a flatter squatter footprint of a building. So, but again, something different. All right. And now for the last of the initial buildings. Now this one I call the apartments with bodega. We'll just zoom in on this one. So it's kind of an apartment complex. You got the entrance to the upstairs of apartments up here you got these downstairs stores I even got like little trash bins in the back I like I, I as I said I wasn't too thrilled with the last one but I'm keeping it I really like this one and now that I say that's probably gonna be my least least selling one but yeah I got the roof here with some vents on it I even again put stuff so if you wanted to make signs and I did this one a little different normally I only have the two with the hex base I did this mirrored the uh the hex base on this so if you wanted to put them close together two of them too close together you can without having to worry about this an open hex here like let me show you on the top down view so got two of them here so if you wanted to they go together nicely um so this is what it looks like printed but not painted very nice i like it and it's a uh, Again, a good size offers blocking against other mechs and flat and large enough so mechs can get on the top or if you want to put infantry. I know I love playing with infantry in, in urban city tech battles. So there we go with that one. So those are the initial designs <clears throat> I am offering once this is funded at the $500 level. Now the next one we're gonna go to is the first stretch goal when we hit a thousand it's gonna actually be another six designs and so these are what i was working on as my next kickstarter but i kind of uh, ran out of steam so hopefully this will be the jump start i need uh these are what i'm calling the, the desert world kind of going with a well, we'll just put a, a, a tatooine from that uh, sci-fi movie from the 70s uh, I know this one doesn't quite look like that, but also just real world um, desert climate buildings like in the Middle East. And it kind of took some of that flavor. 
and of course I don't let's see here so here's a little closer view and I'm just calling this desert building one just an, an interesting looking building that I threw together um, and the, the desert world stuff is going to be a lot a lot smaller in height because I don't see a lot of a larger scale buildings that can block so this is more of a if you wanted a world so let's see here where, where did I put that one oh there it is so that one would be like this I did have a little mishap on the printing there. That little corner did lift up, so if you notice that. Uh, but at least it did uh, it did pass design proofing. And like I said, these are much smaller in scale than some of my sci-fi. Then the next one is, I'm just calling it Desert Building 2. I'm thinking it kind of could be like a, a manor of sorts. Kind of, again, just two levels. Well, kind of a little better looking got a courtyard on it and again we'll go with this top down ah, here we go a little larger than the last one two stories all right next i'm gonna try to speed this is actually gonna look. this one is definitely inspired by that uh well, what was that fire i'll just say it by by star wars it's the Kind of modeled after the lead landing pad in Tatooine. Um, again, it's a larger, larger footprint, but again, not too tall. And you can see here. Um, I will say this: for most of my stuff, I try to design it so you don't have to use supports. This one, you, I would suggest using some tree supports just for the archway, and it typically is really simple and clean to remove. Um, some stuff here, like again, I put little placards on above the doorways if you want to like write the uh, the landing pad number on here. Um, let's see, go back over here. So this is it. Now there are some differences between this and the other one. This is a, a test print, the original test print. I did these trapezoid doorways. It didn't quite sit well with me, so that's why I switched over to those rounded archways. But everything else is pretty much the same. And yeah, it's large enough to fit mech and, the, and small ships into. So yeah, there's that one. Then the itty bitty home front building. So yeah, this is this is tiny. Um, one thing I did differently with these, I didn't even put a level on this thing because I said these are. This is basically your your moisture farmer hut, but I did kind of on the hex map scale. I did. Shrink them down, put three on there, so it's a cluster. And I made it a rough terrain instead of a light level one. Because it's not even barely a level one, it's half a level. So mechs and vehicles going through here, I would consider it rough terrain. Infantry would just be uh, normal terrain. All right. Next. This is, a, I would say, a medium house. So you can see, it's, just, it's pretty simple. You're wondering why there's no window there. Well, up here we got the stairwell coming up, and a window kind of would have been halfway up the stairs and half blocked. So that now I don't have prints of everything to show you. This is a pretty simple one. Um, next, this is kind of the mechanics garage, and let's zoom in on this one. So we got the main garage area, we got the, the front office. I put this placard here for if you wanted to give us a name. On the back, we got two large bay doors, um, trash bin, oil tank, or fuel tank. Uh, Desert Shrine, I mean, I, I was inspired by a mosque, but I do not know all the finer details of designing what would what would be called a mosque, what would officially be a mosque design. So I kind of just went with my own design um, honoring that. So I certainly hope I'm not offending anyone. I, that's not my intent. Um, but here we go. This is just my, my, my interpretation of a desert environment or just that kind of shrine. Um, I did run into some issues on the FDM trying to print these. I've thickened them up, so I hope it works now. Again, this one I would definitely strongly recommend um, resin printer for the hex map scale. Now, these this is the start of the 
1500 stretch goal and these are some military themed items now this one i did offer in my past kickstarter my previous kickstarter but that was at 28 millimeters and that was just for this scaled up now this is shrunk down for a uh, six millimeter and then uh hex base and then uh, shrunk down even more for that now these I don't think you should have any problem printing an FDM then um, you may even be able to print these in FDM as well I mean they're not there's not too many fine tall detail next we have okay well actually let me go these this is the ICBM silo closed so and then the next I have the ICBM silo open again this was this one was offered at 28 millimeter scale it printed fine at 28 millimeter scale on an FDM printer. I would strongly suggest this one you do on a resin printer at, for all of them, just because I don't know how well these doors. I don't know how well these doors on that hinge is going to hold up if you do an FDM printer with these. So that's there. So I see them. I see BM closed. I see BM open. Now these three don't really fall in any other categories of a, of a, of a project or anything that kind of stuff. These are actually some of my earliest designs when I was still learning how to design. And I'm, I, I will say I am self-taught in all this. So I did not know the limitations of an FDM printer. And these are much finer detail than I think the FDM printer could do. And you'll, and if you're familiar with my work, you're, you'll see this. This is where the first generation of my fusion generator came from. I, I just took this part out and enlarged it. The problem with this one to printing on FDM are these transformer towers. Those, those little antenna are pain in the butt to print. This one could probably be done on the FDM. I, I used to have some stuff out here and there actually was um, a problem with the design. I had to remove them. This one, again, we got some uh, smaller detail barrels in there, some fuel tanks. Again, so this is probably better if you did on an FDM print, uh, on a resin printer. So then these are, again, are at the stretch goal, the $1,500 stretch goal. Now the next uh, six stretch goals go from $1,750 to $3,000. They're about, uh, we're cutting it down to $250 a jump. And they're all variations of walls that I've been working on. And I have them all designed for the most part without a base i still have to go through and add bases to these and i'm going to be adding the hex base and the um mag hex base to them i don't know if i'm going to shrink these down because they're kind of thin already and i don't know how the, well they would scale down so right now there's only going to be three versions of these no base hex base and mag hex base and you're going to get uh basically okay so you got the one one hex two three four five hex length and then you're basically going to get every corner combination I could come up with. So you got the a half wall. So if you wanted to make a, a, a an entrance, you got all corners, three way intersections, four way intersections, five and six. Don't know if you're ever going to use all these, but you have them. Not now. Not all of these are going to get a hex base because the ones that are at a ninety degree angle, this one, this one, and this one won't do well on a hex base because hex bases don't meet at ninety degree angles. So every one of these, except for these three, will get a hex base version. And so you can just get a better look at this. Here you go. Now the thing is, the original you're gonna see, you're gonna see some of them in a, in a moment that have grooves in the side here. And I was originally trying to design these to work with the open lock design with the open lock connector. And for some reason, even though I use the same asset to create the connection point. When printed, some of them just didn't work. So I, uh, that this is one I abandoned a few months ago, and I've come up with a new way to have them come together and connect. Because I mean, there's nothing more frustrating than trying to have a line of connected walls, and throughout the game they keep shifting. Um, you'll see again on some later designs, but I don't, I don't have it on this one. You'll see a little hole, and just like the the, the, the hex bases with the holes on the bottom. I'm going to have these connecting with the ball magnets and then we cut, cut back to the overhead view and this is a, a version of the walls you haven't seen yet so here we go I don't hear that rattling so the balls in, are in there so you're going to get up with a hole in the balls and they're just going to go together and they kind of stay together 
So that way as you're playing, you don't have to worry about all these separate wall pieces moving around. If you want to do the ball magnets on the side, you have that option. So, all right, so this is what the short wall, oops, sorry. The short mark, I'm calling the short mark one wall, the light walls, I should say. So these are more of the anti-infantry, anti-vehicle. They would be considered a level one against a mech, so a mech could still shoot over it. So I got a mark one, a mark two. I mean, they're, they're all would function the same. I would consider them hardened. And as you can see, these this is the original connection groove that I had designed. Um, so this this would be, yeah, this is the Mark II. Again, same amount of connection points, or connect uh, corner. Three, the Mark III light wall. This is how it looks. And again, like I said, these are all just different aesthetics. And then as you saw, the ones I had printed, this is the Mark IV light, hmm, Mark IV light wall. I mean, they're walls. It's, it's just kind of, they're not going to be too fancy. Just a bare concrete barricade. And I also thought you could probably use these at 28 millimeter scale as jersey barriers if you wanted to. And then these are what I'm calling the heavy walls. The Mark I heavy wall, which is kind of based on the Mark II light wall design. I just don't have a design for the Mark I heavy or Mark III heavy originally, so I just renamed this one the Mark I. And again, connecting connection points for... And these will be taken out when we get to this level, and I will make all the adjustments to work with the ball magnets. Now, these are tall enough to block mech, so you would consider these a level two hardened wall. And again, all the different corner intersections. And then this is the Mark II, or the Mark, based off the Mark IV light wall design. So again, tall enough. To, basically, think the, the, the heavy walls are the anti-mech walls. They're tall enough to block mechs. So... Yeah, so that's what I have right now, and that last one we if we reach three thousand, is that the last stretch goal? That's the last stretch goal I have designed. If this is a phenomenal success, I will have additional stretch goals at, at the five hundred dollar mark, every five hundred dollar mark beyond three, so three thousand, so thirty five hundred, four thousand, forty five hundred. Again, I don't know how successful this is going to be. Uh, I always have that fear that <laughs> I will be burdened with success and be uh, having racing to fulfill thousands of uh, extra, many more stretch goals. I don't know if you guys uh, want to be that generous and help fund that. But oh my God, we're almost at a half hour for this opening video. So I'm just going to close. Here we go. That's what I have to offer. It's my SDL spring cleaning. I hope you like my designs. I hope you're willing to support this project. And uh, yeah, you will get all the designs you've seen here. As you can see, most, this is pretty much, I will say 90% done. Um, this is all gonna be digital downloads for you so you don't have to worry about shipping. This project, all my other projects have been, when, that were funded, have all been fulfilled. So here we go, this is the latest one. Thank you all for spending uh, all this time with this video, and I hope I haven't bored you too much. But uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for checking out my Kickstarter, and thank you for your support. Have a good day. Bye.